In recent years, we've been closely monitoring China's ambitions in the field of high-tech unmanned aerial vehicles. This isn't the only indication that the Chinese drone system is capable of reaching supersonic speeds. Before we start, it's important to note that the two WZ-8S appear to be real aircraft, not models. It's unclear how much they reflect the current maturity of the program, but these are indeed real aircraft. Given that the WZ-8 has been around for some time, these might be early demonstration models or an early production configuration. The WZ-8 is a high-speed, high-altitude, air-launched, unmanned reconnaissance aircraft that can return via a runway. It also bears a resemblance to some high-speed forms that China has been testing over recent years by dropping them from high-altitude balloons. The novelty is that we now know its propulsion system, rocket engines. This is unsurprising, considering China's struggle with advanced jet engine technologies or how they will use this aircraft operationally. Developing an engine capable of operating at high supersonic speeds is a significant technological challenge. The use of rockets allows for a much simpler and more accessible solution for a power plant, which can accelerate the WZ-8 to extreme speeds but might also limit its maneuverability and flight range. Former PLAAF instructor Sun Jongping said, The exercises have shown that PLAAF air defense units can use complex weapon systems like the WZ-8 in unfamiliar terrain at any time. On the depicted aircraft, one can see a pair of small, open-cycle, liquid-fuel rocket engines installed side-by-side. Side. It's unclear whether these engines are reusable or single-use. We also don't know their exact type of fuel, but being rocket-based, this craft could potentially ascend to extreme altitudes, possibly approaching the edge of space. It could then use the acquired speed and altitude to continue on a quasi-ballistic trajectory, before turning towards the recovery area in denser air and ultimately gliding for a landing. So we're not necessarily talking about something limited by the altitudes of SR-71, A-12, D-21, or their kinetic characteristics. A big question is how it can control itself at altitudes where traditional flight control surfaces are no longer required. Without a reaction control system, which it doesn't have, it would likely be restricted to flight below roughly 140,000 feet. Keeping all this in mind, I believe this aircraft is built for flying primarily in the uppermost reaches where traditional control surfaces are effective, and possibly a bit beyond the ballistic arc for a short period of time. This is still quite a lot, even at an altitude of 135,000 feet, Mach 3.42 amounts to 2,500 miles per hour. As for how fast this craft can move, that remains unclear. But I would speculate that the upper supersonic range is somewhere between Mach 3.5 and 4.5. Mach 4.5 at an altitude of 135,000 feet is 3,285 miles per hour. This isn't exactly hypersonic, but it's incredibly fast. Even a 20-minute cruise at such speeds would allow such a craft to cover 1,100 miles. It's highly likely that it's air-launched from a specially equipped H-6N, H-6K bomber, so this wouldn't include travel time to the launch site or its flight home, which would be a glide descent to a landing. I think it's safe to say that this craft could have a range of 1,500 miles. Such a radius of action and altitude would allow it to cover vast swaths of the South China Sea. In fact, it could launch from Hainan Island, recover at one of China's outpost islands in the South China Sea, and return for another mission. Its H-6 carriers can also fly far out to sea, launching the drone in a very remote location and allowing it to scour vast areas of the Pacific Ocean for American carrier strike groups or perform high-speed flyovers of potential adversaries' territory. Intercepting a small target arriving without warning at Mach 4.5 and an altitude of 135,000 feet is, to put it mildly, no easy task. This also gives the People's Liberation Army Navy, PLAN, the ability to collect intelligence quickly while the adversary doesn't know when its eyes will be overhead, which is a major limitation of traditional spy satellites. This intelligence gathering capability has many applications, not just carrier strike group detection. The post-strike damage assessment function alone for ballistic and cruise missile strikes on strategic targets throughout the region would be incredibly important as the information it gathers could preserve valuable missiles for other targets and allow planned commanders to conduct an accelerated access denial campaign over time. 
China has a number of large but secretive aerospace programs, including two bombers that are deep in development. There are rumors that one of the bombers might appear at the event marking the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. The H-6K variant, which is significantly modified from the original aircraft and optimized as a long-range cruise missile carrier for anti-ship and ground targets, has been fielded. The H-6N is a further development of this earlier missile carrier version. The most notable difference between the N and K variants is the complete elimination of the bomb bay on the N and the addition of a semi-submerged area with a hard point for a large missile. In some general aspects, this resembles the ability of Russian Tu-22M backfire bombers to carry a single anti-ship cruise missile, such as the K-22 or K-32, in a semi-submerged installation under the central part of the fuselage. There are no pictures of H-6Ns with payloads visible, and on some of them it seems a plug is installed which gives the fuselage a normal profile when the missile is not loaded. So, it remains unclear what type or types of weapons the Chinese intend to use on these aircraft. The primary weapon for the H-6N will be an air-launch derivative of the DF-21D anti-ship ballistic missile, referred to as the CHAs X-13. According to a report published by the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, the standard DF-21D has a range of over 930 miles when launched from the ground. This new missile, which employs lightweight composite materials, will have a range of over 1860 miles. The air launch of the weapon can also help increase its operational range by eliminating the need to first climb tens of thousands of feet into the air. The DF-21D is equipped with a maneuvering warhead with conventional armament, and the CHSX-13 could employ its basic design. The existing ground-based missile reportedly has limited ability to detect and home in on a specific target during the terminal phase of flight using radar and possibly infrared sensors on the warhead. It can also correct its course mid-flight based on information it receives from other sources via a data link. It's unclear whether the CHA's X-13 will carry a conventional or nuclear warhead and it could be dual capable. China is developing two air-launched ballistic missiles one of which could carry a nuclear payload, stated U.S. Army Major General Robert Ashley, the head of the DIA. A nuclear warhead would reduce the need for particularly precise guidance and could make the weapon useful for simultaneously destroying large groups of targets, including entire U.S. Navy carrier strike groups, notably the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force, PARF, already uses the larger DF-26 Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile, IRBM. Last year, the state-owned China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, CASIC, also showcased a new short-range ballistic missile specifically for anti-ship targets known as the CM-401 at the Biennial Zhuhai Air Show. Overall, it could turn out that the H-6N could use its large semi-submerged mounting structure to accommodate a range of different air-launched ballistic weapons and potentially future hypersonic weapons in the coming years. The bomber's ability to carry a large payload can ensure that it remains a useful tool in the PLA Air Force's arsenal, even as newer stealth bombers come into service in the future. Similarly, the U.S. Air Force plans to continue flying its aging Cold War-era B-52 bombers for decades for exactly this reason. Air-launched ballistic missiles are also becoming an increasingly popular concept worldwide. The H-6N is also noticeably equipped with an air refueling probe on the nose, which could further extend its flexibility and range, especially when it comes to striking targets on the very fringes of areas that China claims as its inalienable national territory, including in the South China Sea and beyond. The ability to refuel in the air may also be simply necessary for the aircraft to deliver a weapon to the appropriate altitude and launch point. In any case, the H-6N could become another powerful addition to China's existing extensive anti-access-slash-area denial, a 2-slash-AD capabilities, especially in the South China Sea. Moreover, China's ability to detect and track maritime threats, as well as potential adversaries in the air, underwater, and in space, is rapidly improving, as are its command and control capabilities. When it comes to ship detection, the Chinese can increasingly use manned and unmanned reconnaissance aircraft, as well as coastal assets, including over-the-horizon radars. This provides the network needed to strike with long-range anti-ship ballistic missiles. 
As for the H-6N and its armament, we may learn more during the October 1st parade, especially if one of the aircraft flies over spectators at Tiananmen Square carrying some sort of payload. With this official debut, we are almost certain to see more of these missile carriers in various conditions, including at exercises that will also help reveal more about its exact capabilities. We will keep you updated on new information about exactly what China plans to present during the big and heavily militarized party.